Hey there. Welcome to the Pine Island Experience Podcast. I'm Joanna Anderson with my husband, Trigvi. Each of our episodes will be conversations with fellow Pine Islanders. The goal of our podcast is to share with you our experiences, what we have found to be fun, and what makes the Pine Island Experience so unique. One of the first ones I did was of my father, and he lives in Naples, of course, so I put him on his dock at his house on the water and um, screwed him down for life like a John Irving novel. Uh, the neighbors thought it was him so much so that they called and said, your dad's been out there for a really long time. You better check on him. So I just played along with it. and. He said, he's tough. He can take it. He was in World War II. He was a sergeant. So um, he can stand being out in the elements for a long period of time. So they got a kick out of that. And, and they wound up liking it because it wound up being a built-in no-wake zone. Because when boats came into the canal, uh, they would slow down thinking it was actually someone there fishing. So he was in a fishing pose. So it's pretty fun. You just heard artist Jeff Abbott telling us about his first figurative art creation, a tribute to his father. Jeff has been wowing people with his figurative artwork for more than 20 years. Much of Jeff's life-size 3D artwork surrounds his house in Bokelia, and he says half the fun is finding his home. As Jeff says, he would love for you to come out and see it. And now, here's Jeff. Welcome, Jeff. Thanks for having me. We're so excited you're here. We've been working on this for a few weeks trying to get you here. You we were busy. And when you said you could come, I was so excited. I've seen your art, um, but mostly read about it. I saw that couple. You said, are you sure they were uh, real? So that's a pretty funny story we'll have to talk about. But thanks for joining us. Welcome. It's nice to be here. Well, like we always do, we start from the very beginning, you know, uh, where you're born, where you grew up. About your, I know you, you went to school for art, and you know, about your high school teacher. So tell us all about yourself. Well, I was born in Long Island, New York, in Massapequa. Parents, my uncle and my grandfather, moved down to Florida back in 1953. So I was only one year old. <laughs> so you don't remember. So no, they said I cried all the way down. <laughs> but um, my grandfather settled in Fort Myers on Riverside Drive. And my dad and my uncle went on down to Naples, and that's where they preferred to be. So I guess Long Island was similar to Naples to some degree. They lived um, on the water up there, so it was kind of a, a similar setting. So they felt comfortable there. And um, my grandfather was actually well known for his art in the Fort Myers Art League back in the 50s and 60s. So I have a little family history there. Grew up in Naples, went to Naples High. And played on the golf team there and then went to college at USF in Tampa. Go Bulls. Yeah, at the time, interestingly <laughs> enough, they, they, we were called Brahmins. They started off as Brahmins, oh. but nobody knew what that was. No. <laughs> <laughs> so they had to at switch. the university or just the general public? <laughs> yeah, everywhere. <laughs> so they had to switch it to, they just shortened it to Bulls later on. That was the early 70s and mm -hmm. I played college golf there. And uh, that was the same time when Andy Bean and Gary Koch played for Florida. So um, I was in a tournament once and I caught up with their group and I watched them hit. And I said, OK, I can go home now because <laughs> <laughs> I knew that I wasn't up to that task. But uh, mm. at least I was out there for a little while. Had good instructors in, in college. Um, I had uh, Bob Delinas and Harrison Covington, who I believe later became the dean of the art department there at USF. So. I had some good uh, tutelage that was uh, beneficial. And then um, later on, Pam and I, and when my wife Pam um, developed multiple sclerosis in 1992. Ooh. And so I've been a caregiver for quite a number of years mm -hmm. on her behalf. And in 2000, we bought our house in Bokelia and moved up permanently in about 04 or 05, I guess. I was still working at the time. I, I was in the marine industries for over 30 years. Mm -hmm. I had my own business uh, refinishing all types of vessels, large and small. 
we moved up to Bokelia to retire because it was a sort of a golden pond kind of a place for me because my parents and my brothers, we used to come up fishing to Bokelia. So I said, when it's time to retire, that's where I wanted to, to be. Quite a few people have said um, they discovered it, you know, fishing yeah. here and then they wanted to live here. Yeah. Quite a few of the people we've interviewed have told us that story. Yeah, of course, there was only Pine Island Road back then. Yeah. So it was a two-lane road and it <laughs> took forever to get, to get up anywhere. there from Naples. You know, it was sure. quite an adventure. That's a that's a pretty long drive. It was a long drive back then. When did you meet Pam? Did you meet her in high school or college or... Or you don't have to answer if you don't want to. <laughs> no, I can tell you. It's kind of funny. Actually, she she worked for my parents as a housekeeper. Oh, <laughs> so you got to know her really yeah. well. You saw her all the time. I saw her all the time. And at first, of course, you know, there was nothing there. And then finally, uh, she asked me to go to football, a uh, high school football game. So we went to that and one thing led to another. Oh, nice. So it was pretty cute. Yeah, that's cute. It's nice when you start out friends like that. Yeah. I couldn't have had a better wife. She's just fantastic. Yeah. I've seen a picture. It wasn't too long ago you had on Facebook. Yeah. Of her. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, she's in a skilled nursing facility now, unfortunately. Oh. After Hurricane Ian, I, I couldn't bring her back anymore to the house. No. So that's sort of forced by hand. Yeah. But, you know, it's been a, a good good ride. Mm-hmm. So with the art teachers, uh, like what did they get you into that, that kind of, you know, drove this passion? Well, fortunately... My art teacher in high school, Pat Morrison, uh, encouraged me because uh, he saw that I had something. And that was huge. And that's one of the reasons I try to encourage kids today when they come to my house to see my display. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes it's just one little thing that someone says to you that might get you involved in something. Mm -hmm. And it can be a catalyst. So uh, Pat Morrison um, got me going and sort of gave me some wings. And then um, I've always done art my whole life, off and on, of course. But, you know, you had to make a living back in the 70s. Anytime it's hard to make a living as an artist. So I had to do my own thing. So I, that's when I started the boat repair because it was similar using your hands. And there was a lot of art involved. I did graphics, lettering, oh, okay. all kinds of stuff. So it was the closest thing I could do to uh, art to still make a living. Yeah, it's art. Spray painted boats and, yeah. and um, had some great customers along the way. It was a good uh, a good way to make a living. And then when it came time to retire, um, of course, like so many people, I went back to what I loved, which was art, which is what you wanted to do in the first place, you know. Could have been somebody. <laughs> but um, Well, I think you're right, though, on those words of encouragement, because I think for those people that don't create anything, it's like, what's the big deal about creating something? And... Uh, I've done some photography. She does some photography. And um, maybe people experience it with cooking if you have somebody over. But you put your heart and soul into something that you really like. And, you know, you like about phrase, you don't blame anybody else, right? Like it's how you cooked it or how you painted it or how you did. But people, and, you know, art's so variable too. Some people like different things and whatnot. But when somebody says that's great or I really like that, I know several people said, could I have that print for my house? What that does to encourage you to continue to pursue something. So those kind of, that encouragement you're doing is just probably more, I mean, you must know because you got the encouragement, but I think just in general, there's not enough encouragement for something like that because it's those little, it's not the big things. It's those small things mm -hmm. uh, that makes you feel good and want to create something new. Yeah. Well, art's a lot like golf. There's a lot of failures in yeah. terms of um you know, how it comes out. But um, you just try to uh, take those small moments, like you say, and, and um, cherish them. Are you able to teach anyone, uh, any kids or, or Well, adults? they wanted me to do a tutorial on, on um, doing the figures, but uh, because of COVID, oh, that okay. fell apart. Okay. But, um, you know, I'm up for that if, um, if, they, if somebody wants to do that sometime. Mm -hmm. you know. But I do have other um, people doing it. Actually, Pam McCarty's husband Kenny uh -huh. did his mailbox with um really with my um approach and he did a good job making a flamingo that was uh, goes the top of his mailbox he made you proud huh yeah I yeah. go down there when I go past it every time I uh, go yay go Kenny. <laughs> that's fabulous yeah 
Aww. Yeah, I've become good friends with them over the years. You know, so. And you, you're still painting. You're still painting. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I was 2D before I was 3D. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that. That's cute. So um, I, I can do all forms of figurative art. It's, it's figurative. That's what I do. Um, so my sculptures are sort of a poor man's hyperrealism. Where you know folk art meets fine art, mm -hmm. and uh, that's sort of the mo there. But I fabricate my figures. The uh, hyperrealism; those are cast from real people, the ones you've seen in galleries in New York, and things like that. It's called figurative art or figure art. Figurative. Figurative. That's art. what I consider it to be. And I know I I saw that, and I heard you say this before. It's where folk art meets fine art, which is very yeah. Cool. Someone coined that phrase, and I thought that was apropos. So I'm going with it. Uh, so you started it about 20 years ago. The 3D, I've always done. I've been, I was 2D before I was 3D. Mm -hmm. So um, I do anything figurative, painting, drawing, and uh, the sculptures as well. Can you tell us about the first piece that you did? One of the first ones I did was of my father and... He lives in Naples, of course, so I put him on his dock at his house on the water and um, screwed him down for life like a John Irving novel. <laughs> and uh, the neighbors thought it was him so much so that they called and said, your dad's been out there for a really long time. <laughs> you better check on him. So I just played along with it and said, he's tough. He can take it. <laughs> he was in World War II. He was a sergeant, so uh, he can stand being out in the elements for a long period of time. So they got a kick out of that, and, and they wound up liking it because it wound up being a built-in no-wake zone. Because when boats came into the canal, uh, they would slow down thinking it was actually someone there fishing. Well, smart. He was in a fishing pose, so it's pretty fun. I would think a lot of people would like that out, but, you know, there's so many people that get annoyed with uh, wakes and a yes. no-wake. yes. It, it could be like a scarecrow type. Yeah, thing. it's clever. But um, that was that was funny, and um, I enjoyed doing that. So, what led you to deciding like on PVC as the you know the basic framework or something? I, yeah. I suppose part of it's relatively inexpensive. Well, that was one of the things, and I wanted it to be uh, readily available uh, components that people could also emulate if they so choose. So I went to uh, Home Depot and Lowe's and just started to gather up things that I thought would work. So I said, okay, I get some, I use half inch schedule 40 PVC pipe and glue that up as a framework. And um, I got some spray foam, great stuff uh, in the red can. That's about two pound density, which is good for carving. And then um, silicone rubber in the caulking tube for skin. So it's three parts, just like your body. <laughs> skeleton, flesh, and skin. Mm -hmm. So it, it worked out. And the first ones are pretty crude, of course. I was just trying to see if it was a viable genre or not. One thing led to another and um, just started building them and, you know, made them a little more sophisticated over time, which is basically just a question of spending more time doing it. So um, it's, it's been fun. But the great framework by default then you could... Had you tested it off to the side and knew that you could carve it or shape it? Or did you spray it on and just take a whack to see how it worked? I just sprayed it on and took a whack. I figured it would work because, you know, you're, you're supposed to be able to carve it. So yes, I, uh -huh. I use a hacksaw blade or a, a real sharp fillet knife. The fillet knife is faster, but you got to be careful you don't cut yourself. Yeah. Because yeah. a lot of times you're, you're uh, scraping toward your body. So uh, I wear gloves when I'm using the fillet knife. But the uh, hacksaw blade, I put tape on the end of the hacksaw blade and it's pretty safe. If somebody mm -hmm. wants to use that, I would recommend just using a hacksaw blade, but it's not something you want to get involved with because it's pretty toxic and you need to wear goggles and gloves and all of that stuff. Now, do you try to follow the basic shape or is it more of a, a, a mass than that you carve? You know, you've got the frame, so obviously you're coating the frame, but you make something bigger because you know it's going to be a head or something like that. And then but you have to oversize it because you're going to carve it down. There's a lot of anticipation. Okay. But um, the framework is the most important thing. And being uh, a two-dimensional artist, I, I, I get the gestural component pretty well because that's, that's the main thing is to get that framework the best that you can. So I take a lot of time with the framework to get that gestural component because then you're just following along the pipe. 
you don't want to have to make any corrections that you don't have to okay. uh, later on. You can with a heat gun, and, and mm -hmm. I've, I've done a lot of that, but it's best to get that framework the best you can, the skeleton the best you can to start off with. And the I foam, think, can the foam be touched up? I think the foam will adhere to foam, like, you know, if you overdo or, or miss a spot or something. Fortunately, everything sticks to everything. Oh, good, <laughs> good. So I can come back in and spray foam over the skin, and it'll still stick if I want to add a okay. tumor or a mm -hmm. lipoma <laughs> <laughs> or whatever, or another hand. No, it's pretty light then. That's a good thing. That's why I like it. You can move it around. It's not like a bronze sculpture that's very, very heavy. So I can reposition them to keep people on their toes. Mm -hmm. So you never know where something's going to be. And including the silicone holds up in, well, of course, Florida doesn't have bad weather per se, but it holds up in the heat. And oh, yes, the 100% silicone does. And then now they've got new hybrid silicones, which are paintable. And uh, that's pretty remarkable because mm. the first paintable silicone wasn't that good, but the, the new generation of it is is much better. It's almost like a marine caulking. So wow, okay. it's paintable. And... Um, so that's what I use right now to keep the cost somewhere within reason. Do you hand paint or? or? The best is acrylic uh, artist paint. Okay. You can spray paint them, but it takes forever for that to dry. Yeah. For some reason, oh. it takes a long time. So that's what I do. Well, it sounds like it's pretty porous too. Well, maybe not with the silicone on. No, the silicone. I put two or three coats of silicone on with a wow. sweet with a spreader. Uh, it takes quite a while to do one, right? About Typically, I tell people about a month for each yeah. figure, give or take. Depends on how much I work on it and what's going on the rest of my life. But um, I don't it's, push myself. I it just sounds do it for like fun. a labor of love. Definitely. Yeah. I just do it for fun. How do you get your inspiration? Now, your dad. Alcohol. Alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly. I didn't offer you anyone, you guys. We could, we could have been having a... I could be the couple. first person to crack a beer on the podcast. Yes, that would be wonderful. <laughs> We should do that happy hour. Podcast. There you go. Now, I don't know where you get these inspirations. Like Queen Elizabeth is jet, uh, water skiing. When but, Queen Elizabeth, well, how did I you like get to, that? I like to conceptualize. So that's part of the fun. Uh -huh. And then I just see where it takes me from there. But, you know, it, it, I'm going like, well, what, what could she be doing that would be <laughs> like not what she might be doing? I said, well, <laughs> Queen Elizabeth water skiing, you know, that's a little... Outrageous, so that's a good one. Yeah. You know. She looked great, and you put her in the water. We did and a sea trial yes. with her, and she did pretty well. <laughs> She's a swimmer. Yeah, well, yeah. I got to do Yorkies. I guess that's what she has, right? The dogs? Uh, uh, no. Um, something. Oh, those short. No, I know. that they uh, had Why'd you for say years. that? Our neighbor has one, sadly. Uh, yeah, what's Siggy? Oh. Oh, if you said it. King we, Charles. Like uh, no. No, no. Uh, oh, it'll come to us. Yeah, eventually. Yes, but there is a, tr well, at least with that line of the royal. Corgis. Corgis, thank corgis. you. Corgis. Oh, that would have bothered us the whole time. Yeah, corgis. Yeah. She had multiple corgis, I think. I think she yeah. gave them to. Somebody said I should put corgis up on the bow. Yeah. But, uh, you know, there's so much stuff to do. I've yeah. got it. It's all in my computer. Here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My brain. Do you get a lot of requests? Oh, yes. Oh. That's one of the reasons I did the creature from the Black Lagoon, mm -hmm. because my friend, uh, across the street she liked that movie so and i was thinking about doing it anyway and then when she said that i said oh well now here we go I and she's do. across the street so yeah. she'll be seeing it yeah she enjoys it and um we call it you know creature from jug creek oh <laughs> yeah we know where that is so it comes up out it's it's on the, the dock ladder coming up out of the water no, I know you like to take them on location so being light so you took a me mechanic to like Win Dixie, uh, mechanics or? been all over the place, <laughs> and um, the lady washing the car <laughs> has been all over the place. So I've got it where I can put them in the in the vehicles and carry them around. And, and the snake rides on top. Snake stays on the roof of the car, and then on the van are the the hands of the person getting out of the car. Oh, and there's a dog on the back window as well. So it's just fun stuff, you know. Yeah, I like to get a reaction from people. Get a lot of thumbs up. People honk. And oh, it's pretty fun out there driving sure around. They would. Yeah. Try to brighten people's day a little bit. And then what about Helene and Wayne? Did they know you were going to do it? Oh, my gosh. No, that was a complete surprise. <laughs> I had to keep it a secret. <laughs> Not easy to do. But um, How'd I, you pull that off? I did them before they got back. They're from uh, upstate New York. I did it over the summer when they were gone. 
and we we keep in touch. We have a group of friends, so we knew when they were coming back, and and they had to go to the store that day when they got back to get their provisions. So we knew that we'd have a little window of time, and that's when we did the installation. Now they often sit on their porch, right? Isn't it, that what inspired you? Absolutely, Wayne is extremely gregarious and everybody knows him and he always waves and yells to everybody that goes by. So that's the position that I, I put him in with my sculpture. Mm -hmm. So it, they're getting a big kick out of that down there now. Oh, I bet they'd love it. So now there's really four people on the porch. There's four and if there's only two, you know they're, they're not it's there. It's not them. Yeah. Well, that's what you said to me. You said, hey, are you <laughs> sure they, they were human? Yeah, I like, oh, no, that was not, that was the sculpture. I bet. Yeah, it was the sculptures when I called you. Yeah. I thought, I really thought it was people. Yeah, most people, it's fooling them twice. They're waving it to them, thinking it's him until they realize that it's not. That, in a way, that might be the most popular in the, it's the surprise of figuring out that it's <laughs> art. So if you drive around with a snake, people are going, oh, look at the snake. Right. You, see, you see odd stuff with what people drive around with today. So right. uh, not to be with a snake on top, but I mean, I think it's so realistic that, you know, and here you are and you're probably thinking about, you know, fishing or getting by to eat or getting a drink or something right. and you drive past and, you know, this is a very friendly community. So I can see people waving and saying hi and then wondering why they don't get a response back. Absolutely. Well, everybody's down by the restaurant, so everybody goes past there. So I've got a good spot and uh, it's just fun to get a reaction. You know, that's what artists want to mm -hmm. do is get a reaction. And it's nice having stuff out there in the public. So I know it's working for me even when I'm not there. Do people come up to the mechanic and ask him what they're doing? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Especially because he's face in toward the engine. In, in, like, what's wrong? So it's like, you know, what's, you know, what's wrong? <laughs> he's been standing there a long time. Yeah, he's, never, he's a terrible <laughs> mechanic. <laughs> he never can get it fixed. I told him it wasn't the alternator. but no. That is hysterical. I bet some people will. I wonder if they, like, you know. For the couple, they get out and end up touching them to try to figure out, or the mechanic, they got to come over and say, "Do you need any help or something like exactly. that?" Exactly. Well, when Mel Mio had her gallery at the center, you know, I made the one of her, mm -hmm. and she was painting her sign up on a ladder, mm -hmm. <laughs> and people would come up and ask her, you know, when the next art class was going to be and stuff like that. And it wasn't <laughs> she didn't even answer. Her. <laughs> um, she uh, couldn't hear them. Probably is what yeah, they thought. Well, you know what. Now, can you say which one's your favorite? I mean, I know your dad's is probably right up there. Well, talking about that, um, I did the piling people. I have four divers on top of my pilings oh, wow. in various diving poses. Four divers? Yeah, female divers. Life size. So that, that, yeah. that took more than a month. Oh, yeah. And that's probably my favorite just because of the engineering aspect of it. And then it's the artwork and it's just, it's compelling, you know, seeing them up there on the pilings, you know, diving yeah. into the water. So is that where you you spray them and they spin around? Is that one of them? One or? of them spins. Yeah. Two of them spun until my buddy hit one with a boat and then it doesn't spin <gasps> anymore. But I gotta I gotta put a new lazy Susan bottom on oh, it and then it'll hurt. spin again. <laughs> so there's all kinds of things, <laughs> funny stories that happen. That's too great. Lazy Susan go and enters art. Yeah. Lazy Susan <laughs> is on a stomach that allows it to spin around. Too funny. And I got to paint the bathing suits on, and that's always fun. I always yeah. wanted to be a bathing suit bikini painter, you know, <laughs> like the guy in Key West. Oh, yes. Uh huh. You know, that looks like a fun job. <laughs> now, the one on Facebook you did an hour before you came here today, that that's one of your creations. That's not a person. Which one is that? Painting. They're on the bed. Oh, that's in my drawing class. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I take a drawing class, too. Okay. At the Alliance for the Arts. Oh, okay. And that's very beneficial. Uh, they have that every Wednesday for the last uh, three months. I've been doing that. So wow. It's really nice to draw from a live model. Of course. Anytime you get a chance to do that, you got to go for it because uh, it's fun and it's very beneficial to keep. It sounds like you have to practice. Yeah, sure. but I'm pretty natural when it comes to that kind of stuff. So, mm -hmm. and when you're creating new artwork, is it then just kind of released on display or do you announce it or preview it or is it just people have to trip across it? I mean, how does that well, part? Well, part of the fun of my display is I don't advertise or uh, tell anybody where it is. They have to come and find it. So, but they seem to enjoy that. Yeah. Well, that's part it, of the fun. It's like an Easter egg hunt and they feel like they've accomplished something when they get there. <laughs> well, I so, can't imagine if they just drove by and didn't know it was there. Yeah. A lot of people have done it that way. Yeah. 
But most of the time they have to ask. I make them ask around, but everybody on the north end of the island pretty much knows where it is. Yeah. So if you get up there, the postman knows and the mm-hmm. cops know. And <laughs> <laughs> people, all our uh, waitresses know. Sure. At uh, Lazy Flamingo and uh, Captain Con's. So and people it, bring their friends. Friends bring their friends. And um, uh, it's, it's, it's been very ven- beneficial to me being the caregiver uh, mm-hmm. for my wife, Pam. It's given me something uh, purposeful uh, to do over the last few years as a caregiver. And I've become friends with a lot of the people that come there. So it's, it's given me the socialization I, I've needed. Uh, so it's, you know, it works both ways. Yeah. And you have a nice guest book, I heard, too. I have. I'm um, on my second guest book now. And um, it's been incredible, uh, the friendship that I've, I've acquired with uh, the visitors that come there. And uh, it's just been a lot of fun. And I've had people, all kinds of funny stories. I've had people come from the same town that knew each other, unbeknownst that they were there. Really? So all kinds of cool stories. People from all over the world, Mm -hmm. China, you know, Netherlands, uh, you name it, Japan, uh, Germany, of course. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's cool to, uh, to see where everybody's come from. Now, what can you talk about what you're working on? Now or next? Or? Well, I'm doing mostly repairs right now, getting ready for season. Okay. Because the height of the season here, as you know, is January, February, and March. March, yeah. So I'm getting ready for that. But I'm always, I'm always doing one, one that's going on. I'm doing a, a Mr. Mango Head for next uh, Mango Mania. <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect. I couldn't resist. Mr. Mango Head. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Now, will the parts come on and off? I assume that's based <laughs> on Mr. Potato Head. The <laughs> Kind of, yeah. It's going to be Mango Man, and it's just, just a head that you put on. Anybody will be able to wear it. Oh, okay. yeah. I got you. Okay. Yeah. Because I try to make it, when people come, I try to make it interactive. Mm-hmm. So I have a giant red fish you can hold up. Uh, you know, you can save a lady. <laughs> From drowning, uh, that's another one that people like to hold and get their picture taken. So, and I have stuff for the kids to do. They sit on the alligator and get their picture taken, things like that. And you can put your head in the mouth of the alligator. Aww. So when people come, I, I give them a little things for the. So it's um, interactive. Yeah, it's interactive. Yeah, you. Pro- I imagine you've inspired a lot of people. Well, I hope so because I try to get the kids involved in art. Yeah. Because it, it helped me, you know, when somebody inspired me. So, you know, just sometimes it's a little thing you say. that Just encourage them. Oh, not, yeah. Well, wasn't that great of your teacher in high school to tell you to pursue painting? You yeah. listened to her it and meant, look at you. It meant a lot. Yeah. And, uh, if Lovely. I can inspire one kid, you know, to keep going. Yeah. Because sometimes, you know, that's all it takes. Now, do people leave any kind of donation to help offset the cost or their appreciation? I tell them it's not necessary. Okay. But people bring wigs and clothing. Oh, okay. And cookies and stuff like that. Beer. Stone cookies. Beer. Beer Oh, for you. Yeah. Yeah. So, (laughs) what kind of beer do you drink? Some any anything that's cold. (laughs) But I've never. It's like a golf course. Never met one I didn't like. (laughs) Yeah. But uh, they bring. One guy brought a case of foam. Because he owns a hardware store up north. That was nice. Wow. He sent me a case of foam in the mail, so that was cool. So it's all kinds of crazy things happen. Yeah, special. Yeah. Well, it shows how much it meant to them. Yeah. Oh, I've had all kinds of, don't make me cry, but um, all kinds of those kind of stories. One lady was on her bike out there in the morning at 10 o'clock in the morning, and I said, you know, hey, how you doing? You know, what's going on out there? She said, your artwork always makes me feel so good. My father just died at 4 o'clock this morning. Oh, no. Wow. And she was out there at 10 o'clock because it took her mind off of the death of her oh. father. Yeah. And if that doesn't t- tug on your heartstrings, sure. then, mm-hmm. I don't know what does. She just wanted to feel a little little normal. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, poor thing. That's just special when you can reach somebody like that. Yeah. yeah. It's touching. Yeah. Well, you, probably, I, you made a lot of people happy. Just think all the smiles. You know, yeah. it's, it's, Free smiles. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's easy to be grouchy and negative. But yeah, life's too short. Yeah, you know. We're but if you can all, start only here for a little bit of time, so you know, you got to make the most of it while you're here. Now, obviously, um, address the secret, part of the fun, understand all that part, just out of 
I guess morbid curiosity. Are people pretty polite when they come by, or like, do you get like flashlight? I mean, excuse me, headlights flashing across the house because or middle of the night. No, there's really no noise pollution. I'm very discretionary about that kind of thing because I try to be respectful of the neighbors mm -hmm. as much as I can be. Sure, and I tell people not to come after dark. Okay. Now, occasionally, locals in a golf cart mm -hmm. will stop by, but it's people. I, you know. A lot of the people are my friends even before all this, so mm -hmm. I can't. You, 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 I can't stop having friends. So, um, but I try to be um, respectful. And cars today are pretty quiet, so there's not a lot of noise pollution. It's not like jalopies are pulling up. <laughs> and it's you know I, I try to uh, keep it low key. It's not like I'm cooking meth or anything. <laughs> Well, yeah, but golf carts are you can you can drive your golf carts up there. Yeah, I have people on golf carts, bikes, yeah. kayaks. Oh, boats. I didn't think about the kayak. Yeah, I have a the, the back of the house is dedicated to the water yeah. part of the thing. And I do uh what I call a water ski show as well. Um I take some of the figures out on the water and tow them around in between the condos in the no wake zone. And people get a big kick out of that too. You no, know, fishing captains must bring their you know, the guides must bring them by. I have a, uh, a few uh, charter boat captains that bring their yeah. folks by. It makes their day. And yeah, they, they sometimes say that's the height of their trip. Yes, yes. I have people that come to my house right from the airport before they even go home. So now um, the, the local stuff. So you take the mechanic to a parking lot, for instance, or something else. Like, right. Is that just like... You wake up one day and you say, you know, it'd be fun. I'm going to take yeah. the mechanic down to the parking lot right. at the store or... Are there kind of like, even if unannounced, some are they like planned visits? Like you're saying, okay, Sunday, I think I'll do this. Or is it more just impulse? You woke up Sunday and say, oh, I'm not really doing anything. Let me just drop it off in the parking lot and have a little fun. Yeah, it's just impulsive. And then I see it usually when it's nice weather mm -hmm. that gets you going, you know, it's not going to rain. And it's, so I'll do it then. And sometimes like I, I, during the drawing class, I took a lot of the stuff to the Alliance for the Arts. So they got a kick out of that. The one one lady that works there, I fooled her with a lady washing the car. She told me the last time I was there, I fooled her. <laughs> so that was funny. That's nice when you can fool somebody. Yeah, well, like, people like to be fooled. Yeah, It's like a magic show or something. You know, they like to be tricked. You can almost, I don't know if you have any characters, but like, you know, those little pop-up tents and a table with a couple people of your art sitting on those chairs. I could see somebody stopping by saying, what can we sign up for? Yeah. Is this a fundraiser? And, and, Take them, you know, several seconds to figure out that they're talking to art and not real people and then realize nobody's answering. Well, that's why I've tried to help businesses with um, staging the figures at their mm -hmm. businesses uh, to try to bring people in there, like the Mel Mio statue. And then she had the uh, lady getting the mail for a while, too. Mm -hmm. And people came up to try to help the lady get the mail because they thought she was having trouble. Reaching in the mailbox. Oh, my gosh. So there's all kinds of funny stories like that. It's a lot of sweet people. Yeah. Helpful people. It's it's fun, you know, and it's just fun going around and doing the stuff. We've we've done skits, too. With Wayne, we, we had, I had to have an old lady on a walker. And Wayne and I, we did a skit down by the by the restaurant and the pier, and we pretended she had to go back to the trailer park, and we couldn't get her back across the road. <laughs> So we kind of stopped traffic on purpose, you know, just for fun. And people were laughing and mm -hmm. it's just, you know, when I call her Aunt Dolly, I said, Aunt Dolly, we got to get back to the trailer park. <laughs> you know, come on, let's go. So we, you know, he's on one side and I'm on the other side. And we're trying to coax her back <laughs> on the on the walker. So um, just little stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, people enjoy that. Yeah. And um, I've got the big 12 foot white shark and we, we put that on the roof of the cart one day and took it down to the pier and pretended to... He had just caught it. So I had him out there with that big funny hat on and a big heavy duty rod. And <laughs> people were coming up like, yeah, we just got, we just caught this. What do you think? <laughs> well, if you'd take the, the shark for a ride, um, when we were living in Chicago, it was after the movie Jaws. Oh, they actually go. had, they were moving it through the Chicago area. It tied up traffic yeah. like you wouldn't believe. Yeah, I'm a menace to navigation. I was going to say, I sure. bet you any, I bet you stop traffic constantly. I do, but that's part of the fun. Yeah, just come up strength, fellow. Yeah. See what happens. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, any future plans? Oh, I've got so much stuff to do. It's unbelievable. Got a list. I'm never going to stop. They can't stop me. 
So you got to do something. I think um, it's everybody's choice. But if you don't have some kind of activity and, and if nothing else, I guess, mental exercise of some kind. So the, certainly creativity has got to be good on multiple levels. And as you say, keeps you busy or something like that, but makes for health, healthier and happier. It's very therapeutic, and like they always say, you got to have money, your health, and something, a hobby. So, uh, <laughs> you know, as a caregiver, that, that's my hobby. But um, I just enjoy doing art. I've always liked doing it. And uh, see what kind of reaction I can get out of folks. Well, I wrote down something you said once. It was uh, whatever you can imagine, you can create. I thought that was very, very profound. And that sounds like you. Well, it is. And that's why I try to encourage people to, to do it because you need to see what you can come up with, flex your artistic muscles. And you just, you made it come true. Yeah. Take, you know, look what you take, your PVC and your foam and your... You never know what you're going to come up with. Yeah. But that's it's part incredible. of the fun. You never know where your mind's going to take you. I just wish I'd invested in great stuff years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I, I hope I have. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. Well, thanks for having me. We, you are so interesting. It was so enjoyable. Well, thank you for having me. And I hope people will stop by to see my artwork. If they're in the area, feel free to stop by. They will now. They'll see the, they'll see the pictures and movie with, associated with the podcast and they'll be out. Yes, please come by because art is a dying art. We hope you enjoyed our Pine Island Experience podcast. If you have any ideas for us, people to interview, or any comments, please feel free to email them to us at pineislandexperience at gmail.com. That's pineislandexperience, all one word, at gmail.com. Don't forget to like us, and you may subscribe to this podcast using all the major catchers like Apple iTunes, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. Thanks again for listening, and remember... Island life is a constant vacation. We'll see you on the next podcast.